Spirit, you are welcome here. Come find this place and fill me up. It was uh, about 30 years ago, but I can remember it like it was yesterday. You have any of those memories? They just kind of take you back. As I gathered together with my two younger siblings and, and my mom, she was a, a single mom, but she was a trooper. She was taking us out so that we can go from door to door, knocking as little hoodlums to attain the prize of sweet goodness. Now, I can remember that I had this really thin plastic drop cloth of a costume. And this cheap plastic mask. But it was never enough. You see, life's just not fair. See, Johnny down the road, he got a better costume. His mask was a lot nicer than mine was. And, and that wasn't fair. Yeah, I, I was limited by the area that I could trick or treat at. But he, he got to go to the best neighborhoods. And, and life's just not fair. He got to wear his costume. Mine was covered with coveralls so that I did not get cold. And life is just not fair. We say it all the time to, to, to children, especially to our children. They come up and they tell us about something that someone else gets to do and life isn't fair. But, but Johnny's parents let him watch that show. But they let him go to that movie. They let him play that video game. They let him stay with friends overnight. And so it all comes back to you. And one of the, the blanket answers as parents that we have is get used to it. Life's not fair. But it's not so easy as adults when we have to hear those words, is it? And we, we go through our own struggles. I grew up in a in a house with a single mom, didn't really know what it was like to have dad there, but I knew what it was like not to have dad there. And somewhere in this dilemma of, of being a child from a broken home is this question of, where's dad at? And why would God allow this to happen? Why does he allow brokenness and pain to exist? Is God really fair? Maybe you've asked yourself that question. Because you've been pushed to the edge. And you've had to deal with some pretty intense pain. I don't know what your pain is. Maybe for you, you can go back to a point in time where there was a molestation that took place. And for you, that rocked your world. And you were left asking, is God fair? If, if there is a God that really exists, how could He allow this to happen? And perhaps for you, you've dealt with a separation. You came home. It was just an average day. But you got that little note of, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. And you're left to pick up the pieces. In a point in your life that you never thought you would be, Maybe it was that regular routine checkup at the doctor's office that left you with some not so good results. I'm sorry, it's cancer. We had this wonderful lady. Her name was Esther. She would walk by our house in Minnesota on her way to the senior dining facility. Uh, Esther was in her 90s. And she would go to that senior dining facility not to eat, but to serve people 20 years younger than her at the senior dining facility. Esther was an amazing lady. And uh, it was in her 90s that she found out she had cancer. Longest standing tenure for Sunday school attendance. What is God doing? Why not just let somebody go out on the top of their game? Why do, you, why do you have to introduce cancer into the picture? You wouldn't have even known from Esther's life that 
when she was a young mother, her, her husband took his own life. And the pain and the agony that it must have, have happened in trying to raise these kids by yourself and trying to explain to them what happened to dad. Why do things like that happen? I was sitting around a, a table and we were just doing a, a message at a food pantry and, and we kind of established this new system. If you want to come in and get a free handout, if you want to get food, we want to give that to you, but you, we're first going to ask that you sit down and you hear a, 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 a biblical message. And so we did and we had this message and afterwards I sat down at the table with this lady and she was, she was looking at me with pain-filled eyes. And her comments went something like this. If God is real, then why last year did he take my son from me? This little kid, innocent. If that's the kind of God that you serve, then I want no, no part of this. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you know somebody that's there. And when you look at their life, you can just see the pain and the agony. And you know what? Life's not fair. But it leaves us with another question. Is God fair? Does God allow pain to happen? Does He cause pain to happen? What kind of God would do this? If we flip back to the beginning of our Bibles, and many of you, you won't even need to because you know the story by heart. In the book of Genesis, the, the story of creation, God created all of the earth in six days. It was good. He, he created on the sixth day man and woman in His image, and it was very good. And then he told them not to do something. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will surely die. Well, Satan had already fallen from heaven. He was an angel. And he was manipulating the situation. He was, he was deceiving. And he deceived Eve and, and she ate from the the tree and she gave it to Adam and he ate from the tree and they realized that they were naked. And they were trying to hide. But in this moment, we see that, that they have unleashed a, a series of consequences that have an eternal compact, uh, impact on our lives. It says through Scripture that their sins were representational, one for all. And we can pick up in, in Romans. For we've all sinned, we've all made mistakes, we've all done wrong, and we've fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages, the, the penalty, the punishment of that sin is, is death. So their sin, it wasn't immediate. They were removed from the tree of life. And they were, were not just removed from that tree, but they were given some pain to remind them of their actions. Remember Eve, she was, she was going to be destined to give birth to children because God wanted them to be fruitful and multiply, but now it was going to be with pain. You can thank Eve. And every time, ladies, that you give painful childbirth, remember, her sin was just representational of yours. And guys, we were supposed to work the ground. It was a beautiful garden. But now... By the sweat of our brow, the thorns and the thistles are growing up from the ground. This is hard work. Guys, we've been trying to get out of this hard work for years. We try to come up with new epidurals to take away the pain, and we try to come up with tractors that we just punch in the GPS coordinates, and we don't have to work the soil. The, the tractors do the work for us. We've been trying to get out of the pain for years. The fact of the matter is that that's only the beginning. It was uh, just a few weeks ago, my daughter was helping out in the kitchen, and the oven was on, and there was a pan inside. She had placed that pan in there, and, and she went to go get the pan out, and she had the pot holder, but it slipped. The, the, the pan was, was starting to become unbalanced, and she reached out her other hand to grab the pan. 
It was a mistake. It was a mistake that probably many of us have made. But it doesn't go without consequences, does it? You try to get that hand under water. You try to maybe put some sort of ointment on there to take away the pain. But the pain is still there. Sometimes we're like Adam and Eve. Sometimes we make mistakes. We, we choose blatantly to go against what God says and we deal with the, the pain and the punishment. And so we intentionally do something that's wrong and, and we touch what's hot and we get burned by it and we have to deal with the consequences. And sometimes, sometimes somebody else, they turn on the, the oven and the pan is just sitting in there and you have no idea it's even been on. And you reach in and you grab that pan. It's not your fault. Nobody told you. You had no idea. But it was just there. You see, every one of us, without a doubt, across the, the room here, has made a mistake. We've, we've intentionally chose to do what was wrong in, in order to try to please ourselves or to, to keep up with the Joneses. But the reality is we've done wrong and we've dealt with the, the punishment, the pain from that. And so sometimes bad things happen because we make mistakes, but at other times bad things happen, pain happens in our life because somebody made a mistake that we have absolutely no control over. But their sin started a ripple effect that has made its way down to us. I didn't do anything to cause my parents to separate. But did that alleviate me from having to deal with the pain of living in a broken home? No. Some of you today, you need to come with, to grips with a couple of things. Number one is, if you're doing what God has told you not to do or not doing what He's told you to do, that's sin. And if you want to avoid pain, this is how you can control it. Stop. It, it sounds simple. It's, it's so much harder than that. But it kind of stinks because even if we live a righteous life, even if we've got it all put together, sometimes pain still happens because other people who are in this world with us, they make mistakes too. And we have to deal with it. Sometimes life isn't fair. Take the story of Job, for instance. We're not going to have time to read through the, the story of Job in its entirety in the Old Testament. But what we can do is we can get a, an understanding. In, in kind of a weird scenario, God is walking with Satan. And they're talking about the, the condition of the world. And, and Satan is kind of like, you know what, hey, if, if I could just torment somebody, I could make them suffer enough, they're going to deny you, God. And God is like, oh yeah? Well, there's Job. Why don't you go try it? Satan's like, well, that's, <laughs> that's not fair. You've got like a hedge of protection around him. Job is he's pretty well taken care of. He got his back. God's like, well, let me tell you what. You can do anything to Job that you want except take his life. Man, that leaves a lot of room. That leaves a lot of room for a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of struggle. And it doesn't even seem fair. Like Job is this righteous man of God. He's done nothing. Why would God allow him to go through this? But we see in the story of Job that his, his livestock gets taken from him. His, his place of, of finding a little bit of money to take care of his family. And not just that, his family gets taken from him. His children, removed from the picture. His wife, removed from the picture. Job's very health, taken away from him. If you think you're in pain, if you think you're de dealing with some hard stuff, dude, turn to Job. Job was, he was sent through the ringer and yet did not deny God. He didn't do anything. But what was done through him was amazing. See, through that suffering, God was glorified. It was almost through this story of, of Job and his pain and his suffering that, that God was saying to the rest of us, don't worry, I got your back. Stay faithful to me and I will provide for you. 
And he was, he was just kind of shaking his finger at Satan. See, man, I told you so. God's got it under control, but that's not always an easy place to be. It's quite frankly, we like control. Sometimes, sometimes pain happens because of our mistakes. Sometimes pain happens because of other people's mistakes. But sometimes pain happens because we live in a broken world. In the book of Romans, the book of Romans in chapter 8, we can read a little bit about this. Verse 22 Page 613, if you're following along in one of our Bibles. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Okay, so it wasn't just Adam, it wasn't just Eve, it's that the whole creation is groaning, and not just groaning, but in pain, and the kind of pain associated here with childbirth. It's intense. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly. Why are we groaning? I mean, we're the believers. This is who this is targeting here. The church, the believers, why are we groaning? Well, here it is. As we wait eagerly for adoption, as sons, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope, we were saved. In this, this moment, this instance, we can see that, that it's not just our sins and other people's sins, but we live in a broken world that's falling apart. It's temporary. But it's crazy to think in Revelation that, that we have this promise from Christ through the Apostle John that behold, I make all things new. And the very creation from the beginning that Adam and Eve messed up is available for us at the end, only better. And throughout the Old Testament, we're given this crazy story, this narrative journey of these people we call the Israelites. They were descendants of a man named Israel, Jacob. Now, the Israelites were, were living in a place that God was promising to them but not had yet delivered to them. And they went through an intense famine. And you could say, well, if these are God's chosen people, why would He have a famine in the land? Well, maybe even, like, if there's this, this kid, he's, his name is Joseph, and he is the youngest, and, and he's the brightest, and he seems to have the best thing going for him, why would his brothers just throw him in a pit and eventually send him off to slavery in Egypt? That's not fair. I mean, does God allow that kind of pain? You bet He does. So what did Joseph do? Joseph went in and slave, but he, he rose to prominence. And it was through the position of Joseph in the house of Egypt that the Israelites were saved. And it was through another man, Moses, who went through his own pain, who led the Israelites out of Egypt towards what we call the promised land, a place that was supposed to be a place of rest. Moses didn't get to, to push the journey there. That was another man by the name of Joshua. Hebrews in chapter 4. Hebrews in chapter 4, page 649 if you're following along. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, for the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united in faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. Well, that's kind of crazy. We, we have a promise still to enter rest, but the Israelites, didn't they enter into rest? Didn't they have the promised land? Well, if we read through the rest of the Old Testament Scriptures, we can see that they squandered that pretty quickly. They didn't even get to inhabit the whole thing that they were promised because of their own sinful actions. But if we skip down to verse 8, in Hebrews chapter 4, we see this. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest 
has also rested from his works as God did from his. There it is, that Genesis account again. Six days, God created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day, he rested. The Israelites, as they're promised to go into the, the, the promised land, a, a land of rest, but yet it's not been achieved. The promise is still out there. It's still yet to be attained. It's that promise that exists for all of us when we get to heaven. See, one of the reasons I believe that pain happens is pain reminds us that this world is temporary, that this place is not our home, that we don't belong here, and that we're called to so much more and something so much better, a place where there's no more sorrow and no more pain, a place where we're right there with God Himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth. A place where, where when we think of, of pain, Jesus says, I've paid the price. See, the reality is true for all of us. God is unfair. God is unfair, and we can thank Him for that. Because we know the wages of sin is death, and we definitely deserve that because we've all messed up. And He was unfair. You see, when we deserve death, He gave life. When we deserve to be punished, He took it away. But God is just. Death still had to be paid. A life had to be lost. And that life was that of Jesus Christ, who walked this very earth that we walk, put on flesh like us, Open himself to temptations like we, we see. Open himself up to pain and suffering. How many times it must have broken his heart as he's walking this road with the church and he's trying to invest in them and, and be there for them and they just don't get it. How many times as he's walking through the, the road with his disciples over the course of three years and, and he's still coming back to, oh, you of little faith, why do you not see It was Jesus who got to the end of his life on earth and said, God, if it's at all possible, take this from me. My God, my God, why do you forsake me? Do you think that you serve a Savior who doesn't understand pain? He understands our pain every time we turn our back on him. He understands the pain because He loves everybody and He doesn't want to see anybody hurt or suffer. You think He wants to see a little child lose his life, an elderly woman die of cancer? The crazy thing is that we serve a God who doesn't cause the pain, but man, He can use it. It all works out to the glory of God. And no matter whether we do the mistake or somebody else causes the mistake for us or it's because we live in a broken world, we know that all things are going to work together to bring glory to God. And sometimes we need to remember how faithful God has been because chances are you've been delivered through a tough time. And you wouldn't wish that tough time on anybody, but you know that being delivered through that has made you who you are today and you're better for having gone through it. Pain can be used by God in tremendous ways. And I want you to remember that God has, has delivered you in the past. And just the way that the Israelites throughout the Old Testament set up these markers to remember what God has done. We need to have markers in our life. So when times get tough, so when the pain gets intense, we can look back and go, oh yeah, but remember God. God is faithful. And God will get me through this too. We just spent four weeks talking about the Holy Spirit. As Jesus walked this earth, He felt our pain, but, but He left us with a comforter. This promise to indwell each of us who believe. A comforter that's going to give us peace even when the world's falling apart. And we need to trust in that Savior inside of us, the Holy Spirit, to get us through the tough times. And we need to keep our eyes, even though we remember the past and God's faithfulness, but we focus on the rest ahead of us. Because this world is not our own, and there is a place of no more sorrow and pain. 
So what will you do with your pain? Will you allow it to draw you closer to God? Or you put up a wall and push him away? Will you fight him against that? Or you bask in his glory? I can't answer these questions for you. I don't know what pain you're dealing with, what sorrow you must be overwhelmed with, but I do know that there is a God that's bigger than any pain and any sorrow that you face, and He can use it. But what will you do right now with your pain? Father, we thank You so much that You have continually been faithful to us, even when we have turned our backs on You. We admit we do not have all the answers. We see but a snapshot of the world around us and many times we're overwhelmed with what lies before us. Just the busyness of a regular schedule, trying to run the kids from activity to activity, keeping up with the deadlines at work, dealing with pain and sorrow and brokenness. Just doomed to repeat it again the next week. Father, we know that uh, you have been faithful to us time and time again. And there is so much more that you want to do for us. Help us to help us to draw near to you and to be overwhelmed by the power of your spirit promised to, to live within those of us who believe. To have a peace that surpasses understanding in confidence that we serve a God who delivers and a God who makes all things new and a God who promises rest help us to use this pain in our life as motivation to press on as an opportunity to serve you as an opportunity to help others who are going through the kind of pain we've dealt with Father I pray that you would give us wisdom and insight in how to deal with this Bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.